Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be diving deep into the Japanese art of forest bathing known as Shinrin Yoku. In Japanese, Shinrin translates to forest and Yoku translates to bath. Shinrin yoku or forest bathing has nothing to do with taking a dip in water but instead refers to the practice of immersing ourselves in nature and taking it in through all of our senses. Unlike getting outdoors for exercise, the primary aim of Shinrin yoku isn't to sweat it out. Instead, it's the opposite. It's to slow down, be fully present in nature and experience the many benefits that come with this. At the heart of this concept is the deep-rooted knowledge that most of us already know and people from different cultures across the world have embraced it for centuries. And that is that spending time in nature can make us feel good. Back in the day, it was just good old common sense, but since the term Shinrin Yoku was officially coined in Japan in the early 1980s, more and more scientific evidence has emerged backing up what we've always known, that nature plays a pivotal role in enhancing our health and well-being. Like many others, I'm someone that's always found a lot of peace and calm in nature. It's helped inspire and spark my curiosity and creativity. So it's no wonder that this concept intrigued me. I first came across it in Hector Garcia and Francesc Morales' book, Ikigai, The Japanese Secret to a Long and Happy Life. Although this book briefly touched on the concept, in my quest to learn more, I picked up the book Shinrin Yoku, The Art and Science of Forest Bathing by Dr. Ching Lee. This is a fascinating read that goes into the many science fact benefits of how forest bathing can benefit us, and I definitely recommend checking it out if you're interested. In today's video, I'll be sharing a few things that I've learned along the way, and eight simple tips that have helped me reconnect with nature and embrace the art of Shinrin Yoku. Let's start with the most obvious, and that is to find a spot in nature that we enjoy. If we have the option of heading to a forest, that would be ideal. Otherwise, finding a local park, garden, or some form of greenery around us is a great place to start. Essentially, the deeper that we can immerse ourselves in nature and away from the hustle and bustle of the city, the better. Also, where possible, finding an area with trees is ideal. According to forest bathing experts, trees are the essence of Shinrin Yoku. Areas densely populated with trees are not only higher in oxygen concentrations compared to urban environments, they're also full of something known as phytoncides. Phytoncides are natural oils emitted into the air by certain trees, scientifically shown to reduce levels of cortisol and adrenaline, our stress hormones, and boost levels of NK, or natural killer cells, that support our immune system. Trees like conifers, pines, cedars, and spruces are said to be the largest producers of phytoncides, but really, phytoncides or not, any natural space is going to benefit us. Something to consider if you're new and if it's available in your area is to look up forest therapy guided tours. There are so many available nowadays with more and more popping up all over the world, so you might just be in luck and it could be something you're interested in. We spend so much of our time constantly connected, phones buzzing, notifications left, right and centre, amongst other things. Forest bathing is a practice that really encourages us to tap into our senses. In order to do so, it can be helpful to unplug and pop away phones, cameras and other devices so we can truly enjoy the experience and be present for things that we may have otherwise missed if we were immersed in our screens. The next step is to slow down. Being outdoors means we're obviously going to be getting some form of exercise, but the aim of Shinrin Yoku isn't to get from A to B. Instead, it's about slowing down and just allowing ourselves to be in the presence of nature. Letting ourselves wander aimlessly, being curious and just going with the flow. This could involve walking slowly or finding a spot to sit down and be still and just noticing everything around us. Tapping into our breath is a great way to slow down, quieten our minds and bring our attention to the present moment. Noticing the different smells, taking in the fresh air and as mentioned earlier, inhaling those phytoncides are all part of the forest bathing experience. As Aristotle once said, in all things of nature, there is something of the marvelous. Nature creates patterns everywhere we look. These recurring patterns are known as fractals, and studies have shown that looking at fractals can help relax us and boost our mood. 
whether it's the intricate veins on a leaf, the way the branches divide in the trees, or the shapes of different plants, slowing down and looking for patterns around us can be a calming exercise. Also, stopping to notice the little things like movements in the trees, insects crawling around, and all the different colors of the forest can really open us up to the awe-inspiring beauty of nature. In the hustle and bustle of daily life, we're constantly surrounded by noise, traffic, and so on. If you're with family or friends when forest bathing, see if you can take some time to remain silent, blend into the forest, and just listen to the sounds around you. Birds chirping, rustling of leaves underfoot, or the wind whistling through the trees. Taking some time to listen to nature's music can be a magical experience. Next is to tap into our sense of touch. Now always use some caution with this one as you don't want to go touching anything poisonous like these mushrooms that we found the other day, but where appropriate, take some time to feel things around you, like the texture of the leaves, the bark on a tree, or take your shoes off, stretch your feet and feel the soil under your feet. Don't be afraid to get your hands a little muddy either. Studies have shown that soil contains a harmless bacteria known as M. vaxae that we often come into contact with when we're gardening or ingesting root vegetables. It's said to help boost our mood, which could explain why gardening is such a stress buster. Finally, as an addition to forest bathing, or if you can't get out into nature, it always helps to bring a little nature to you. Whether it's your home or office space, one simple way to bring the outdoors indoors is through houseplants. I love creating a green space within my home. I just think it's a really beautiful way to decorate. Plants improve the quality of air within your home. And I just love the color green. I think it's a super relaxing and calming color to have in any space. Another tip mentioned in this book for bringing those forest smells to your door is through tree essential oils that you can simply pop in a diffuser. In Japan, Hinoki essential oil is a really popular one and nostalgic for many people as a lot of homes, temples and shrines are built from the wood of a Hinoki tree. But there are so many different oils out there, so see what you prefer. You might enjoy some pine or like me, I prefer some cedar wood in my diffuser. Have a look around for something you enjoy and that's suitable for your home. And those are eight simple ways that I've been reconnecting with nature, learning to slow down and embracing the art of forest bathing. Let me know in the comments, what are some things you like to do when you get outdoors? Do you have a favorite nature spot that you like to go to or any forest bathing tips of your own? Would love to hear your thoughts. As always, I'll leave the book I mentioned and some other resources down below, so feel free to check them out. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.